Hey guys, welcome back. In the last lecture, we added the dislike button in the question detail card. Now in this lecture, what we will do that we will implement the API endpoint to update the like and dislike count into the database too. Okay. Uh, for now, we were, we are just uh, clicking on it and just displaying that how many times the button has been clicked. But now we need to store that count into the question table or question model okay so we will do that in this lecture but uh, before starting with that let's see how it's working right now so right now if you can see uh, into the browser that we have two different buttons like and dislike okay so when you click on like it will store that how many times this button has been clicked and when you click on the dislike then it will show the click the count for this button okay if you click on this multiple time then it will show the multiple discounts a uh, multiple clicks button okay clicks count okay then if you click on the another question that it will display the click count for that and if you click on some another question that it will display the click count for that particular button okay whether it is like or dislike now when you refresh the page okay you will see that all like and dislike count has been disappeared why because whenever we refresh the page component is re-rendered and since our data is static here for like and dislike count okay so we losing the data okay now what we need to do we need to implement a rails api okay and then through that rails api we will update this like and dislike count click count into the question table or into the question model okay so to do that first thing we need to do is that we need to add two attributes into the question model okay so to add that let's generate a migration okay so first switch to the terminal okay and so come to the terminal and in the terminal what we need to run that we need to run rails g migration here we are here we are creating a new migration and what we can add let's uh, add counter attributes add counter ttrs to questions questions okay and what the attribute name we can there let's uh, we can provide let's say likes count okay and then dislikes count dislikes count okay and both should be integer okay so mention the type here as well integer because if you do not provide the integer explicitly here then it will by default create the string type for both like and dislike count so here you can see the migration has been generated so now let's open this migration and we need to check this what has been generated so just copy this and come to your sublime directory or any preferred text editor where you have opened your project so open it and here you can see that it is adding two columns into the questions model that is likes count and dislikes count now we need to set the default value for both the attributes okay and what the default value we can set here so we need to add default zero okay why because whenever a user clicks on the like and dislike button we need to increment its existing value by one so for now we are setting it to zero because if we do not set the default value to zero okay or default value to some integer then it will be considered as null okay unless it is clicked and for null you cannot perform the arithmetic operations okay and it will give you the nil course error okay so that's why we are providing the default zero here okay so do the same thing for dislikes count as well sorry dislikes count as well just paste it here and save it now what we need to do just run the migration to get this table into the to get these attributes into the schema okay so rails db migrate so write this command and run this command okay and as soon as this command will run you will see the both likes count and dislikes count attribute will be added to the questions table and here you can see which default value zero okay so just open the schema.rb okay schema.rb and here you can see likes count zero dislikes count zero now the attributes has been added into the question table so what we need to do as the next thing so we need to create an api endpoint to update the likes and dislike count of a question okay so first define a member route into your rails routes okay so open the routes.rb and into this routes.rb we need to define a member action for the questions resource so how we know that how we can define the members route and if you don't know you can follow this okay so here we need to define member do member do and here 
just mention the http verb for that request okay so i am mentioning here put okay and then update counter update okay. save this update and now define a method with the same name okay into the api questions controller okay so here you can see that we have api questions controller or sorry the question controller inside the api v1 name space so we need to define our update counter action in this controller so def paste the action name update counter and here you must open this and first let's simply check the sample response here before implementing any update query so we do not need to implement the update operation here now okay and we know that we just created the member out or we make this update counter action as the member action okay so we will already all we will always get the id of the question here or id of the resource here okay so how we can define this at the red question at the red question equal to and then question dot find and here you can add params id ID okay and then now just let's make a simple request here and that is uh, sorry just simply render this JSON object do not need to update anything here so you can add render JSON and then this return this instance so add the question okay and then status okay okay just save this now let's make a request to this API endpoint using postman okay so first let me tell you about why we are i'm using postman here because uh, i do not implemented or i'm not going to implement this api endpoint consumption into the react component okay so we need to consume this api through the postman okay and you can use the postman at by installing at your system okay and this is widely used the software or widely used application to test the apis okay so i have already installed the postman okay so i'm opening this and you can open or if the postman is not installed in your system then you can install it so after opening the postman first click on this plus icon okay and it will create an untitled request okay so what you need to do here first to select the request type okay since our request is put type so we need to use put here and then we need to provide the path here and what will be the path name here so path name will be let's say http and then localhost colon 3000 localhost colon 3000 then api then v1 then slash questions questions okay and then we know that member action requires the id so we need to provide the id of the resource here so we can provide let's say one okay and then method name what is the method name update counter update counter okay and here you can see now just make some space on the terminal where the server is running so let's click on this send button now okay when you click on the send button this will send a request to your rails application okay so we click on send okay and here you can see that we are getting some error the request is coming here okay so you can see the request is coming to the api v1 question v1 questions and then update counter action and it is processed by api v1 question controllers update counter action and it is coming with the parameter id 1 but we are getting the error can't verify csrf authenticity token or token authenticity completed for 22 unprocessable entity okay and we are getting this error why because we are trying to access an api but our rails app is the full stack so we need to add some csrf authenticity token handling here okay and we know that whenever we create the api only application we uh, always get project protect from forgery okay so we need to add this into our questions control question api controller as well okay so just open your questions controller and what you need to do here just open it and protect from forgery protect from forgery and then with null session 
Okay, just call, save this and now try to send your request from the postman again. Okay, so again make some space on the terminal. Okay, and when you click, when you send this request again, now you will see that we are getting the object one or the question one object. Okay, so with ID one title, how to check if his key is present in hash and then tag that created and updated and our new attributes like count and dislikes count and both with value zero and you can see that this request is working now okay now we need to update the questions like and dislike count okay so we can check in params whether we are getting the update request for uh, updating the like count or we are getting the update request for updating the dislikes count okay so let's handle that logic into the update counter action so go to the question controller again okay and here we need to handle that logic so what we can handle let's say if params count if params then count four okay and let's consider that we are identifying the like and dislike by count four params okay so you can select other name as well if you wish but i'm using this count four okay so let's add like sorry like if the params or user click for the like update okay so then we need to update the likes count here so what we can do at the red question question dot update and in this update what we need to do likes count so we will update likes count and then at the red question dot likes count plus one question dot likes count plus one okay why because initially we set the default value to zero okay so whenever a new request is coming to update the like count then it will the existing likes count value of a question will be incremented by one okay now we need to check if uh, the count four is dislikes okay so we can add else if and just copy that because we just need to make a uh, minor change here okay so you can add dislike okay and here you can use dislike and then again dislikes count okay, so this is done and now close this method okay so our update logic has been implemented okay now what we need to do is the next thing that we need to try that our logic works okay and we need to test this api from the postman okay so let's open the postman again and now we need to set a request body for the request okay so open the postman and here you can see come to the body part okay so when you come to the body here you can see that there are multiple options like none form data url encoded binary graphql but we need to use the raw okay and when you select the option row select the type of the form as json okay and now in this json you need to set the body of your request okay and here again in the controller you can see what params we have choose here or what the param name we ch choose here so it is the count for okay so just copy this and here you need to mention count for and then just use like okay and now this is our request body so now you need to click on the send button and when you click on the send button you can see that it has updated the like count by one okay and id one and dislike count is still zero and you can verify this request on the terminal where server where uh, sorry on the terminal where the server is running okay so here you can see that count params what we are getting count for like okay and then id is one and question is an empty hash and here you can see let's say update questions likes count updated it by one okay now let's click on let's send this request again so you will see that now the likes count will be two okay it is updated again similarly let's try the same request for the dislikes count as well okay so now what you need to do you just need to update the request body and instead of like just send the dislike for count for params okay and now send the request and when you send the request now you will see that dislike count is updated by one and uh, an update query is fired here okay so you can see in the params that counts for dislike id one and questions is a empty hash okay so now our api endpoint is working and this was the purpose for this lecture 
in the next lecture we will consume this rest api into question detail read component instead of consuming it through postman okay until then just try this lecture at your end and if you have any question or doubt or any suggestion for this just let me know through the comment section okay so thanks for watching this and let's meet into the next lecture till then tata goodbye take care and stay safe